What's up, everybody? This is the Youth School for Business. You are in the sales, uh, the sales training episodes. This is the last one of the series. I'm Adam Pearson. This is Zach Fadara Monday. Check us out at youthschool.biz. Spelled with a Z, like how the cool guys do it. All the cool guys. Uh, everybody who's cool, instead of using any time a word ends with the letter S, they always end it with the letter Z. Z. Like oh, the boys with the Z. Just all cool people do that. It's just, them. yeah. It's a given. You get kicked out of the cool people club <laughs> if you don't if you don't roll like that. Right. Um, so here's what I want to talk about. All right, this is a this is an important thing for selling. This will ha- also help you get your head around yeah, what it, what it mean what it means to be a good a good salesperson. All right, I want to tell a joke. I think I've told you this joke before. Okay, my father-in-law is from Peru. Right. All right. So he's from a little town called Selandine. Right, and the people in Selandine, you remember this joke? <laughs> it's coming back. It's coming uh, back. So the people in Selandine are known as the people who buy and sell stuff. They're business people. They're right. merchants. All right. There's another town in Peru called Chota, Chota, C H O T A, and the people there are known as knife fighters. They right. fight each other with knives. They like cut each other on the face and stab each other to death. They slice them up. They slice them up. So a guy from Selandine and a guy from Chota are, are on this boat together. All right. And they're talking, and out of nowhere comes a big whale. <laughs> He eats them both. They're both in the belly, right? <laughs> and the guy from Chota is like, if only I had a knife or a machete. i cut this whale up into pieces. I'd kill him and I'd get us out of here. And the guy from Selenian leans in. He says, I have a machete. I'll sell it to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, here's why I bring this up as it pertains to this. As, it, as it, This is how it relates, okay? If you were the guy from Chota and you genuinely believed if you had a machete... And you could cut the whale up and save yourself from dying in the stomach of a whale. And you had some money. Would you buy that machete? Yeah. Of I course, guess. dude. You yeah, would, right? Because no reason not to. you think that there's like a real plausible, like there's a, it's realistic that by spending that money, you will get what you need. What you, yeah. Yeah. And now, let me ask you this. The Selandino guy, the guy from Selandine, is he taking advantage of the guy from Chota in this moment? Or is he selling him a thing he actually wants and actually needs? Like, is he, is he being weird or slimy or creepy by trying to get some money for that machete? A little bit? I guess, yeah. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, it depends I, on the perspective. So I would say, like, in that situation, probably since it's gonna, he's going to be saving his own life, right? Right, right. Like, you probably yeah. just want to give the dude the machete. But um, if the guy, like, genuinely is desiring a machete, and you have the machete, and you are going to give it to him in exchange for money, you don't got to feel bad about that. Right. That's, that's natural. That's a very natural thing. If you're walking around, so we live near a lake, so people walk around the lake, all right? And uh, during the summer, it gets pretty hot. And me and my sons did a lemonade stand. We cleaned up. We cleaned up. We sold like almost $200 worth of lemonade oh <laughs> lemonade and popcorn on the day. I, I think that's how much. Maybe it was less, but it was something like that. And there's tons of people walking around the lake, and they get a little parched. And it just so happens when they came across the place where me and my boys are sitting, we're selling some ice cold lemonade. And they're, <clears throat> you know, they're walking around, Dad, I can't wait to get home. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> right? And right when they walk by, it's like you can see the little um, beads of sweat dripping down the side of our cooler because we was all packed with the ice. Yeah. You're like, hmm, that lemonade looks good. <laughs> they come over and say, Can I have some lemonade? And we go, Yeah, you can have some lemonade. It's a dollar. Like, and, then we, and we also have popcorn. It's like, you're probably pretty hungry from. From walking around the lake as well. You sure you don't want to buy a bag of popcorn? It's like, we got a deal. Lemonade and a bag of popcorn for $2. Or you could just buy the lemonade by yourself for a dollar. You want it? And they go, yeah, we're thirsty. We want it. All right. So are we, um, we're not being weird or right. yeah. closing, a, closing hard. We just happen to have something that would make their life better on hand. And we're charging a fair price for it. So right. if, if that's like the metrics of the situation, that you got a good deal. You're charging a fair price. You have something that the other people need. You don't have to feel weird about about trying to ask people if they want what you got. For the sale. Does it make you feel weird to ask ask people to, to, to pay you for stuff? Yes. It does. I think most people suffer from that. Mm-hmm. There's something weird about that, but you shouldn't feel bad about it because here's something else I learned too. Um, a lot When I was younger and I was in sales, um, a lot of times... I would blow a sale because I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask at the. I, w- I would do my whole presentation and the people were like pretty interested in stuff. And I'd get to the end and I would 
I need to just go like, so what do you think? Is this something that you guys would like to do? Yeah. And instead of doing that, I would just go like, well, do you guys have any questions? And they'd say, no, I'd say, all right, well, thank you so much for your time. And, okay. I, would, <laughs> and I would end the call without asking them, yeah. you, want, you want this? And, um, and then here's what would happen. Like, my sales manager, he's a creep, by the way. Maybe he was all right, but I, I thought he was a creep. <laughs> Maybe he's pretty cool now. But he would actually wait a couple of months and then call those same prospects that I had tried to sell. And yeah. he would simply just call them back and go like, I know one of our guys gave you a presentation. Um, do, you want to, do you want to go ahead and, and sign up now? And they would sign up with him. <laughs> <laughs> and he would get the commissions for it. He would get the commissions for it just because he was willing to go that to one little extra it. step and ask. And the thing is, um, in retrospect, that product that I was selling, that software, that was helpful. Like, that helped them. Mm -hmm. Like, they needed something like that for their business. So right. I wasn't asking them for a gift or a handout or to you know, give me some of their hard-earned money, you get the money in exchange for doing something that they actually kind of wanted, and I just blew it by not giving it to them. That ever happened so to you? So you gotta ask. Yeah, that's happened to me. Yeah, what happened? Come on, tell us the story. I Yeah, just multiple times, like just, you, you think your dad, I just don't ask. I like, do you think your dad's going through that? Probably, huh? He's so sweet, such a sweet guy. Yeah, I'd, just like, like on my phone calls, you know, with people, I just like kind of just, and the call without without asking getting anything yeah set. or asking yeah. or asking for a meeting or something right. like that yeah. yeah that's important that's important and it flows naturally so really yeah. in order to make that kind of more natural is you, you have to kind of know that the people want and need what you what you have so that would really I would say you know in order to make the part where you actually ask for the business in order to make that kind of work better you want to try to do as much as you can before you get to that to um, assess what their wants and needs are. Mm -hmm. So that when you, when you get to that, you already have a very good understanding and a good feeling for you know, if they want it or not. And if, if you just know they don't want it, then don't put yourself through the torture. Like, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> if it's very obvious that they're not interested, don't try to push it on people. Because remember, like we said in the previous episode, your job is the prospect. Your job is to sift away the bad opportunities until you can find the good opportunity. But once you find the good opportunity, once you feel pretty confident, like there's something here, I think these people want what I get, what I have. At that point, you need to be go, be willing to go ahead and you have to ask and and, and go ahead and ask for the business, and it doesn't make you a creep or weird right. or pushy true. or like a, a hard closer or something like that. Man, I once um, bought this book that was called like the the closer survival guide, mm -hmm. and it's all about like. Just getting people to move forward under any circumstances, like being a hard closer. I can't do it. I, that I don't have in me. I definitely. Do. I don't have that in me. Yeah. So for me, I had to come up with a way. I had to come up with a little, like a little system and a little way to get people to move forward, like to get over that hump, to get over that fear mm -hmm. of it being awkward, but still, still close the sale. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the best way to do that is to go spend some time. So just to recap, a lot of the stuff we talked about. Spend some time developing a little bit of a friendship, a little bit of chemistry. Don't be too pushy. Ask a lot of questions. Be willing to um, t say, you know what I would do in this situation and tell them what you think is a good solution. And if you can see genuinely that they need and want what you have and, and you really honestly think that you can solve their problem, don't be afraid to ask, man. Go ahead and ask. It's okay. Um, have you ever danced with girls at a dance before? Mm-hmm. Did you feel nervous about asking for a dance? Yes. I know. I used to get <laughs> I used to get so nervous about asking yeah. girls to dance at a dance, man. But that was until I, I realized one thing. And this is how I met my wife at a dance, because I asked her to dance. <laughs> girls want girls are waiting for dudes to come ask them to dance. Like girls want to dance. Yeah. Girls love dancing way more than men love dancing. Uh -huh. Girls love to dance. So once you get that in your head, it's like she probably is just waiting for, for like some, some dude to come <laughs> ask her to dance. Like yeah. I, it's okay if you go do that because it's something that she probably wants. Like, actually, what well, doesn't mean she's going to marry you or anything like that. She just wants some dude who's cool, like you, to come over and ask her to go out and dance. And mm -hmm. so you don't have to feel shy or anything because it's probably going to be okay. <laughs> the girls want you to dance with them. So anyways, that'll be our last episode of this uh, segment. I'm going to go ahead and say it one last time. Zip it up and zip it out. <laughs>